Hi there, it's Jeff. I just wanted to share with you briefly uh, what the Lord gave me today in my devotion time. Um, Peter is writing in, in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, and he's writing about these amazing, precious promises that we've been given by the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I need to be reminded of those things at times. Um, maybe uh, even some of the most important part uh, truths in my life. It is very helpful to be reminded of those things. And Peter is doing that in his letter. He's saying, just, just think about where you were uh, and think about what God has called you out of. And, and just in the moment, just ponder that for a second and rejoice in that truth and that reality. He says, through these, he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you, mark, may, may, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. That you, that you by Jesus, have escaped uh, a lot of things that is going on in the world. There's still well, part of the world, uh, but we've escaped a lot of the baggage that comes along with the world because we have been given these great, uh, great and precious promises. Then he says in verse five, for this very reason. So because of that, because you've escaped that, uh, and because you've been called by Christ and you have a new relationship with the living God, he says, for this reason, make every effort which is interesting because when we think about salvation and we think about um, God's promises, uh, we oftentimes push away effort, right? We didn't do anything to earn that. And that's absolutely true, uh, that we are saved by grace and not through works, lest any person could boast and say, well, I deserved it. And, and none of us can say that. But in this particular text, he says, but I want you to make some effort. And, and here's the effort I want you to make, not unto salvation, but in the Christian walk, as you walk alongside the Lord. He says, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love for if you possess these qualities, and let's go back over those again real quick because he's saying, I want you to put effort into these things, right? Here's what I want you to put effort into. Virtue or moral excellence. I want you got actually, this is effort. Like you, you just can't let yourself go in, in the ways that you naturally may want to go that actually you need to, to train yourself and, and discipline yourself. So virtue or knowledge, self-control, uh, perseverance. I, I think the church today, as, as men and women of faith, uh, perseverance is huge for us. And yes, absolutely, there's a reliance upon the Holy Spirit. But actually, these are things that we put effort into. Uh, godliness, or, or maybe you'd say obedience to the Lord. Uh, brotherly kindness and love. He's saying, listen, you've been rescued, you've been saved, you've been given this great and precious promise. He says, therefore, put effort in your Christian walk into these virtues, these uh, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. He says, listen, um, for, this is, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. Make every effort. This is a part of this. For if you possess these qualities, the ones we just read, read in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That actually, as we put effort towards these things, they will increase our fruitfulness as men and women of faith. They will increase. And in fact, in his, he uses the negative there. He says, if you don't increase in these things, then you will become ineffective or unproductive. Look at verse nine here. It says, but if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from the past sins. If we don't have those things, we've forgotten what God has done for us, those great and precious promises. If we're not growing in these things, making efforts to grow in these things, maybe we've forgotten about the things that God has done for us. Look at me read that again. He says, but if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind, and he has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. And then he says in verse 10, therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do, if you do these things, you will never fall. 
and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then he says this in verse 12, and I love this, and, and this is probably this is where we'll close. He says, so I will always remind you of these things. What are these things? These virtues that you should be growing in, these promises that God has given us and, and continue to make effort to grow in these things. I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. He says, and maybe we could be these people, and hopefully this morning this is a reminder for you, as you would say, listen, I need to always be reminded of the great and precious promise of Christ, that he has, he has won me to his family and into his, his kingdom, and I want to be a kingdom person. And in that, I want to grow. I want to always be growing. And sometimes that growing takes effort, takes discipline, takes training the body, right? It takes saying, listen, that's not a, a person of God. That's not what a person of God does. I want to grow in virtue, in knowledge, self-control, perseverance. I want to grow in godliness. I want to grow in the way I treat my brothers and sisters in the Lord in brotherly kindness. And I want to grow in love. And he says, these are marks of, of people who are not going to fall away. They're going to persevere through it all. And so I pray that the, today you will be one of those sorts of people, that I would be one of those sorts of people, and that we'd be reminders for each other of the great and precious promises of the Lord. Have a great rest of your day.